Today's topic is, is guiding children to qualify potential partners based on biblical love. Um, I love this topic just for the fact that um, in, 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 in times today, a lot of people have a lot of different, they have issues with just meeting people, learning how to talk to people and qualifying different partners. Um, and they have no clue about what to look for. Uh, just some examples here um, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a woman's side. Uh, they want a man that's over six foot tall. Yeah, I know. Trust me. <laughs> so in my life, I've never been six foot tall. <laughs> so, so like, you know, it's 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 funny. Uh, what's another thing before I go into height? I talk about height. I talk about height. So with height, uh, in a man, you want somebody who can reach. I guess reach high in the tree or something. Or what? What is what is that about? <laughs> what is it? <laughs> Top I'd, shelves. I don't know. <laughs> you um, know, it's 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 pointless things. That, that, that's what I'm trying to say. Things that, that really don't matter as far as your character, um, uh, like somebody ultra pretty or they got a nice figure or whatever like that. You know, on the man side of it. Yeah. And and woman side too as well. Um, kind of carnal carnal mindset with, yeah. with regard to to what you're looking for. Yeah. And so um, I have well, you know, and watching dating shows sometimes they it's it's so it's ridiculous. It's ridiculous the kind of things that they want and 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 they wonder why that. Nothing, nothing, no relationship ever works out because it's based on, on foolishness. Yeah. Yeah, on foolishness. Back, back when I was on YouTube, I used to, you know, they have the little reels or whatever. Yeah. I had to quit that because it was, I spent too much time watching those reels. <laughs> but they would, every once in a while it would pop up and it'd be a guy asking a girl about what she's looking for in a man. And um, it would be, it'd be like, well, he's got to be tall, six foot plus. Yeah. He's got to make... I forget what they. It was like it was usually it was usually Six figures, around man. around two to three hundred thousand dollars a year. That's a lot. And <laughs> yeah, no, like it was like these ridiculous things. But they were none of them. And of course, you can understand these girls weren't Christians. But none of those things were spiritual. They were all physical or markers or markers of accomplishment. Um, as though a man who goes. And does honest work with his hands and brings home money enough money to put a roof over your head and food on the table, as if he is not valuable. Um, especially, you take a man who just makes enough to put a roof over the head and food on the table, and he's a strong Christian man, and you line that up next to you know a dude who's like say six foot three, making making six hundred thousand dollars. I should never say anything about height. You shouldn't man. have said height. That <laughs> I was, have said anything you about shouldn't have height. said height. <laughs> That's the only reason I ever got a girlfriend. <laughs> oh no, oh no. <laughs> I, I was tall. That was that that's was not, my description. That's not what Nancy <laughs> tall. Nancy told you for. All right. So um, our first scripture uh, we want to look at is going to be Second Corinthians six fourteen, um, and, uh, and, it, and it reads: Do not be unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship has righteousness with, with lawlessness, and what communion has light with darkness? Um, I like this. I like this because it, 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 it shoots it out straight. I see this a lot of times, even as, as a child. Um, I watch a lot of adults and I learn a lot from, from, from watching adults. It's just in general. And even going through adulthood now, we got we have some bad pickers, you know, meaning that you want to have a relationship with somebody who is an unbeliever and, you know, someone that's unequally yoked. So I know you go go go, go, go uh, really detail about talking about unequally yoked. You want to hit that real quick? Just yeah. Un, un, unequal yoke. Yeah. Um. The idea of yoke here is to, is to bear some form of burden or some form of work together intentionally. Mm -hmm. You're intentionally yoking yourself to another person to, to bear a burden or to do a work together. That's what yoking is. You, a yoke of oxen mm -hmm. are oxen that pull together for the same purpose, the same accomplishment. So this verse is not specifically about marriage. Mm -hmm. However, I can't imagine, I can't think of a stronger yoke we have inside the world of Christianity. Obviously, mm -hmm. the strongest yoke we ever have is when we take the yoke of Jesus Christ upon us. Um, that's obviously, that's, that's the most important and the strongest yoke we have. But beyond that, in our, in our daily lives, I can't think of a stronger yoke you would ever place upon your neck than to bind yourself to a spouse to do the work of getting to heaven together, to do the work of rearing children together, to do the work of trying to rear those children up 
to love the Lord together. There's, there's, there's no greater task any two people ever undertake on the face of this earth than that. So while this verse is not specifically speaking of marriage, the principle of this verse would apply to marriage perhaps more strongly than any other relationship on earth. Yeah. Don't be unequally yoked. Mm. Now, what does it mean to be unequally yoked? I saw a really good, I should have I pulled that up. I saw a really good analogy years ago. I'd have to draw it, and I'm a horrible artist. This guy w- had drawn out the idea of unequal yoking, and I'll just give you the visual image of what he drew out. So you can imagine that if you had a team of oxen that was just two ox, two oxen, and they're going to pull your plow. And you imagine two, I don't know if you've ever seen an ox in real life. Uh, we go to India, we get to see them. Uh, I guess they're water buffalo, but whatever. Um, but they, they yoke them, and they, they, we, we have seen yeah. them pulling carts. I've never seen them pulling That's a, the thing a you plow. put to, to, to their neck. And they, yep, and they, yeah, yep. It's like, the, so it's this, it's this piece of wood that you put to the neck and you tie it around them. And what it does is it combines their, the yoke allows them to combine their strength when they pull. And so you just imagine two big, strong oxen, and you put that yoke on them, and now you're going to tie the, 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 those lines to that yoke, not to the individual oxen. So the, their two combined power is coming through. That's a good thing. However, you imagine this for a moment. Put on your left side mm-hmm. a big, strong ox. Yep. And on the right side, put a sickly, weak, muscle is in decline can barely walk ox, and you yoke those two together, what is going to happen? And, and that was the analogy this, this brother gave, when, which is this. You know what's going to happen. It's gonna, your, your team is going to veer off to the side because the left side is pulling and the right side cannot. And you switch it, it's going to be the exact same thing. You could, I mean, frankly, you could equally yoke by putting two little weak oxen together, but you're not going to get much done. And so what's the idea? Uh, I want to. I want to rear my. I want to talk to my children about this. I want to mm. rear my children up. Yep. To, to be suitable for another, mm-hmm. but also to seek another that's suitable for them. Exactly. Like like so. Like, so having having somebody that's righteous on one side of the yoke and having somebody that's lawless. Yep. On the other side of the yoke, it's going to be a constant. A constant pull if they're equally strength wise, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Uh, but if if that if that lawlessness is 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 a lot stronger than that righteousness, what's gonna happen to the righteousness? It's gonna sway over. So it's a constant battle within that relationship with each other that you're gonna have discussions uh, or I just um, I guess arguments with each other and cause so much conflict. Uh, one parent is teaching one thing, another parent teaching another thing. You know, it's 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 so much conflict in the foundation of that relationship. Yeah, and I'll share just from a real quick from a young preacher's from a young preacher's observation of okay. how that goes. Yeah. So I know Nancy knows, especially when we were in Lineville, Alabama, and we would visit. And what you end up seeing is, um, and I can't say this is true across the board. I can just say it's true in my experience. You see, and, and even in Memphis, we dealt with this a lot. You'll see young couples with young children, and one is a Christian and one is not. And maybe they never obeyed, or maybe they're unfaithful, or whatever. But you got one that is strong in the Lord and wants to serve God and wants to bring their children up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. And the other does not want that at all. They're very carnally minded. And what you'll see is, if you go and visit in the home of those young people and those people with children, you'll see conflict. Yeah. There's constant conflict. Yeah. But if you go visit them once they're empty nesters, you will see an ennui relationship. Mm. And, and I know Nancy and I discussed it. I was a very brand new minister, but it was strange to me that we go into certain homes and the husband had, we didn't even know they were married. Mm. He'd never been to church. Yeah. Uh, and when you went in the home, we could sit and talk, but if it turned to scriptures, he'd get up and just leave the room. And what did they learn to do? They learned to completely avoid the subject of spirituality. Yeah. And so, again, this is why we want to talk to our children about this. That's why we ask the question on the stage. When I grow up, I want to marry a? Christian. Christian. Why? Christian. 
because of this. And, and one warning is you got to be careful about this equally yoked, not turning it into some sort of like, what level Christian are they? You want a faithful yes. Christian, period. They don't have Definitely. to be a genius. They don't have to be a preacher. They don't have to be anything else. You want a faithful Christian. Yeah, yeah. You want a man. You want a, if you're a woman, if you're a young lady, I want to talk to my daughters. I only have daughters. I, don't you marry a boy because he shows up to church sometimes. Mm-hmm. You, you find you a young man who's working for the Lord in his daily life and marry him. Uh, young ladies, find you a young man who's working for the Lord in his daily life. It's not a, a leveling system, mm-hmm. but a faithful Christian. Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, that's a, that's a starting point. That, that's my starting point. Yeah. Um, and I, I think, I think that's, that, that's just completely foundational. If, 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 if you have two people who are just rubbing against each other the wrong way, like, to, to the core, there's no room for growth. Yeah. you got to be on the same page. So moving on to... Um, Let's go over to understanding love and biblical qualities. Um, that's in 1 Corinthians 13, 4, and 7. It says, uh, love suffers long and is kind. Love does not envy, does not, does not parade itself, is not puffed up, does not behave rudely, does not seek its own, is, is not provoked, thinks no evil, does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in truth, bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Things. Um, one of my biggest takeaways from this, this, this kind of gave me like a platform of a, like what true love looks like. You know, uh, we kind of talked about this yesterday about like infatuation and whatnot and all that kind of crazy stuff. That's not true love. You know, uh, qualities, uh, qualities, these qualities, if you have these qualities in your, your, your relationship, no matter what your disagreement is, it's going to work out. It's, it's going to plan out if you guys are equally yoked, you know, in a sense. Um, I can say that with, 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 with Mary and Adrian, um, not to put her business out, but in order to be with Adrian and myself, you got to have a lot of patience yeah. because we're not the same, same people. We're not the same people at, at all. But if we were not yoked together, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work at all. I mean, we've been divorced a long time ago. We've been married 18 years now, almost 19. Um, and these qualities, without having these qualities, it, it, it really, it, it gives you a sense of that you need to evaluate yourself and evaluate your partner, your potential partner, on these qualities because if, if they don't have these qualities, not saying that you can't be with them, but that's something that they got to overcome before you make that decision at all because you're going down a, a long road. It's not a, it's not a sprint. It's a marathon. Yep. You know, um, I plan on being, on, being, being the agent until the wheels fall off. Yep. You know, so either I go first or she go first. You know, so. That's because y'all got yoke. See, like today, people just get their own yoke and it's got some... Uh, it's got some Velcro on the end, and that way you can just stick it together, pull it apart, stick it to another one. And so, yeah, there is, there is a concept of actually, I mean, that imagery of a yoke, while it's not, again, it's not specific to marriage, there is a quality of that idea yeah, yeah. that makes sense. to, to, to you know, yeah. When you make that vow, yeah. you say the two of us are in this together for the long run, and so... You know, just even going into it, that mentality should make me take pause and make sure oh, yeah. that I'm choosing well. And as parents, and those of us who married, who have been, obviously, we're, as, as parents, we have, uh, most of us have been married um, or considered marriage. And, and so when we look at that, it, I guess it surprises me that my parents never talked to me much about marriage. Mm. Or choosing a spouse, um, I don't knock them for that. I just that it surprises me how little we discuss that. Yeah, that's what you're saying. And so maybe part of the point of this class is to encourage the parents: don't don't make that mistake. Don't assume. Yeah, yeah. don't assume they're gonna make a good choice. Now my parents, I guess, assumed I'd make a good choice, and I, I married up. But you did that could have gone up. the other way. <laughs> you did. So, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you realized that. Yeah, <laughs> I married up. <laughs> I married up. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> anywho, uh, let's, let's break this down. So love suffers long and it's kind. Uh, love suffers long. So that, that, that goes off with the patience and whatnot, too. You feel what I'm saying? So like when you suffer, we have those vows and you're going you're gonna to go with, uh, uh, to death do us apart. 
Um, even when things aren't just perfect, you're going you're to stay with them because you love that person to an extent that even if they're going through something that's, that's, that's traumatizing, you're going to go through that traumatization with them too as well. Um, even if uh, that person may have lost their job and whatnot, or they, they may get ill, you're not just going to jump ship. You know what I'm saying? So love is going to suffer long. Love, love is, I'm not going to go into all details because this, this verse kind of breaks down a lot of these different qualities, but being able to withstand time because it's a, it is a cycle. Anybody who's been married, you know, it, it goes through a cycle whereas sometimes I go crazy or I'm going through something and I need Adrian to, to set me straight. I'm, I'm pretty sure Nancy got to set you straight a lot. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> from time to time. From time to time. In a spirit of meekness. <laughs> In a spirit of meekness. <laughs> right. So, uh, love does not envy. Well, before we, before we oh, move wait, on from wait. that, long suffering and kind, the two things to point out there. First of all, long suffering. Um, Long suffering and kindness go hand in hand, first of all. Yeah. And, and in fact, we know this because if you, if you look at the way that verse is written, he just says agape mm -hmm. is, yep. and then one word, comma, the other word, right? Mm -hmm. They just, like, long suffering and kindness go hand in hand. Together. You have to be long suffering toward people. I, I remember before I got married, when I was first attending services of the Lord's Church when I was in high school, I, I was not a Christian yet. But they had a class on marriage for the teenagers. Like the high school class had a class on marriage. And I remember them saying that you think you love a person until you share a bathroom sink with them. And the point the guy was making was marriage is work. Like you have to learn to live with the person. You have to learn their, their peculiarities and all that. That long suffering. But this word kind is used only one time in your New Testament. And it's here in 1 Corinthians 13. And it carries the idea of benevolent behavior. And so when you look at it that way and you say, you're long-suffering toward their behavior, which may not be very benevolent at times, mm -hmm. and then you reflect that on your own side with benevolent behavior, um, that is this, when both parties are doing that, that is all by itself a recipe for success in any relationship. Remembering that 1 Corinthians 13 is actually talking about the relationship of Christians and how Christians in the church ought to be treating each other in light of the fact that they are using their spiritual gifts to beat each other over the head and mm -hmm. try to pre assume preeminence. Yeah. And so... While this 1 Corinthians 13 is read at pretty much every wedding, it's not actually about marriage, and yet, and yet, agape that he's discussing here and defining here is essential to marriage, to the marriage relationship. Most definitely. We had a question with Tom. Tom. Yeah. Um, 1 Corinthians 7 3, it says, Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. <laughs> Great comment. Yeah, no, that's, that's good. Uh, that, that idea of being benevolent, I think it ties in perfectly with what we're discussing here, being benevolent with one another, toward one another. And again, this class is not about improving our marriages, although we should always be improving our marriages. We have to keep the main focus here, which is what? As we go through these things, we need to teach our children to look for a spouse wow. that's yeah. that way. And as we go into the next part, we got to ask this question. What's the number one way I can teach my child to choose a good and godly spouse? What's the number one way I can do that? Yeah. By example. Yeah. I, I, I'll never forget when I wanted to help, when I was a kid and I wanted to help mow the lawn at the church, and we were on a mountain, side of a mountain. Um, and this man, I'll never, it was the, it's the most clear vision of my mind. 
we're doing, he's teaching me to use a push lawnmower. I was a little kid. And we got a big hill there. And he says, never, ever pull a lawnmower up a hill. Because if your foot slips and on the hill, it'll go down under the lawnmower. It'll cut your toes off, your foot off. He said that as he was pulling the lawnmower backwards up. <laughs> I was about to say, I do it all the time. <laughs> the hill. And I just remember even as a kid, I was like... I was like, what? Yeah. What? And it's that, look, do as I say, not as I do, will not work in Does most it? areas of life, and it absolutely will not work with our children. And I understand that there are some households that have single parents. You can still lay forth that behavior if you date by how you date and who you date. You can still lay forth that behavior in... Uh, the way that you treat fellow Christians. And so I don't want to exclude those who are in that situation. I know there are some who have a spouse that's not a Christian. Well, look, there are plenty of scriptures about the way that you conduct yourself toward that spouse that can teach your children. But in the situation where both parents in the home are Christians, there is no greater teacher. It doesn't matter the words you say unless you teach them through your conduct. They will see right through your words if your conduct does not match them. That, go that goes with so much, so much everything. You, you have to set that example. Yeah. All the way, because uh, kids, they, you know, they, they, they may not say anything, but they're watching. They're watching, they're learning, and they're going to do what, what they what For they sure, know. and like, we know that. And that's their world, and that's their world. Like, like whatever, whatever that, that, that we give in front of them, that's their world of reality until they step out you know, outside and test what you, but that's a whole other topic, and test yeah. what you taught them. But anyway, oh, for sure. that's a whole other topic. No, but, but, that, but that, is, that is essential to this because, again, we want to keep this in the context of kids. Yeah. And there's not a person in here that if we paid a lot of money to a gym and we're going to start this gym and they set us up with our physical trainer and we get in there and our physical trainer <laughs> is the most out of shape person you've ever seen in our lives. He's breathing hard, just breathing walking hard. over, and he's got a donut in one hand and a Coke in the other. <laughs> There's not a one of us that would stick with that physical trainer. We say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Wait a minute. I need somebody who lives this mm -hmm. to show me how to live this. And so we're not going to be perfect as parents. However, we can be consistently faithful and, and apply these things in our own marriages if we want our children. Because you want your children, child to, to grow up and marry someone who's going to hurt them, just hurt your spouse a lot in front of them, and, yeah. and you'll guarantee that, that you, not guarantee, but you will make that outcome very likely. Gotcha, gotcha. Let's go ahead and go over to our qualifying questions, uh, because we're going to answer the, the, this scripture just through the question, so we'll go ahead and move on. That'll work. All right, so um, I have about seven, seven questions, and um, I, I did this Monday with, with all the kids, and I was, I was shocked how they were so... They were so just excited to, to learn about how to choose a partner. I was like, wow, because I, kind of what you said, I haven't really sat down and said, hey, this is what you choose. You know, I'm just, I'm just, I'm showing an example, but they were so in tune. I was just, I was shocked. Yeah. So some of the questions, the first question I have, um, are they kind, are they patient, and are they kind? You know, why is, you don't have to answer, it could be anybody else. Why is it important to have somebody that's patient and that is kind? I think I think the parent the, the people yeah I think we we should we, ask let people answer yeah. that question. Yeah. Uh, you're the most patient and kind <laughs> person I know, so I was I was hoping you would give us the answer, Sherry. <laughs> we did both of us did look at right. We <laughs> right, Sherry. Sherry, why do they have to be? Well, but but you're the one that would know. <laughs> I think Sherry has to be patient too, man. Yeah. So it absolutely helps to have a spouse who can be your is exactly right. Yeah. <laughs> makes me angry sometimes because he is so yeah. 
That is funny how sometimes someone else's patience can yeah. make you more angry. <laughs> I'm no way. I'm no way with Adrian. Yeah. But no, that's a good point. So Sherry was pointing out, and, and it is funny because like, um, you know, Sherry, you're pretty open about the fact that Sean is the more patient one, right? But there's a lot of respect. I don't know that I personally have if I know someone had an issue with anger and they overcame it, someone had an issue with patience and they overcame it, someone, when you can see somebody who said, yeah, that was my weakness and that's yeah. what I had to overcome, and that's a very good point you made, sometimes your spouse, and recognizing the areas of strength in your spouse where they can help you grow, and so Sean, yeah, Sean is the most even-keeled probably person I, I, I know uh, he is extremely that way. And so, yeah. So it's not, and that goes back to that idea we were saying before, being equally yoked does not mean that you're identical. And it does not mean you have all the same strengths and weaknesses, but it does mean that you're faithful to God. And sometimes, say like in your case with Sean, their strength, they all have a strength in an area where I'm weak. But I, like you said, you got to want it. I want to grow. And so if I want to grow, I'll grow toward their strength. Lovely said. Nope. Anybody else? I want to throw, throw something out here. That somehow we have to show our, our children that, uh, that what they're looking at now is not what they're going to be looking at later. Yeah. Because I, I can guarantee you, when Phyllis and I started dating, this wasn't the place you were seeing then. <laughs> it may have been worse, it may have aged with time, but but it, but uh, but you start off with one situation and forty six years down the road you got you got you got another situation physically. That's true. Yeah. I mean I'm not saying anything together. about your face, but yeah. <laughs> but in general in generalities yeah. that's that's absolutely true. Yeah. You grow together. Yeah. yeah. And and to be honest with you, uh we all know that, right? Like if, if you are marrying for purely physical attraction reasons, listen, and I've heard many men say this, and I didn't really necessarily believe it, but I know it's true. You can maintain that same physical attraction to your spouse through the years regardless of many different factors mm -hmm. if the relationship is healthy. But if you're counting on the good looks and the certain physical characteristics to keep the interest yeah. that you're going to be sadly uh, uh, disappointed. In fact, that's a very shallow view very of, shallow. of love anyway, and of, and of marital love. That's a very shallow view of marital love. So I'm sure that Phyllis was, was swept off her feet by your beautiful countenance, but it took more <laughs> than that to keep, the, to keep that marriage together all these years, so... That's a, that's a very good point. Thank you, Curtis. We won't always be as handsome as Mitch is now. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Next question here. Next uh, qualifying question. So we got, we got being, they need to be patient and kind. So, so you need to, uh, not necessarily actually, but you got to observe, like, like, like teaching your kids to observe to see how they act in certain situations. Yeah. Or not, okay. Uh, so uh, next question. How do you respond to jealousy and pride? Mm. Yes. Mm. Yes. Why is that important? The work of Satan is not applied to a Christian life. Those are words of Satan. That, that's, that, that's true. But what is jealousy? Because, see, jealousy is something else. Um, how would jealousy look in a relationship? That's torture. Yeah. I want what you've got. Which is weird, too, because we're, to, we're supposed to be one flesh. In fact, jealousy shouldn't be possible in the marital relationship if you're viewing the marital relationship correctly, right? Because, mm -hmm. because we're one flesh. What's mine is hers, what's hers. Even right. my body belongs yep. to her, and yep. her body belongs to me. Yep. If there's jealousy it, within a marriage relationship, it must be born out of an improper view of the relationship itself. It is, it is. Like, it's a flawed view of, of, of what marriage means. And those it's things, a Velcro marriage. Yeah, yeah. and those, it, it, it still stems back to yoking yourself. Yeah. Yeah, you still yoke yourself. But, like, you know... Somebody, somebody that, that, that's, that's, that's jealous, you know, they, 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 they always question what you're doing. Um, why are you talking to this person? Why are you doing this? Like, it, it's, it's so, 
So bad. Toxic. Yep. Yep. Yeah, jealousy has nothing to do with love. Control. Mm hmm. You know, that's a good point. And Sherry's pointing out that that's basically what Sherry's saying is there's a red flag there. And I think yeah. each one of these questions has a red, red flags fl to red it. Red flags, yeah. And you say, like she was saying, especially to my girls, if you run into a guy who's jealous, guys if he too. shows jealousy, and it's true for the guys, yeah. it's, it's handled differently, yeah. I think, between males and females, typically. They, re, they, they handle it differently. But if, you, if, if the person you're dating, if the person that you are, are engaged to, whatever, if they show, if they rear the ugly head of jealousy... Uh, get out of there, you know, rebuke them, and if there's not genuine repentance, get out of there. Our is a little confused on jealousy, and we think of it in, uh, we equate what a jealous husband is to, to something that is abusive, whereas God is called a jealous God, yeah. and he wants what belongs to him to stay true to him. And in that form of jealousy, uh, we, we can be jealous spouses in that we want our spouse to stay true to us. Yeah. Envy is, is a little bit different form of that. And it's, it's wanting to possess what the other one has. And, and so it's, it's, it is that possessive, overbearing, controlling. Uh, but, you know, God is called the jealous God. So uh, we, we have to be able to wrestle with that in a positive way. Being wanting your spouse to stay true to you, based on the definition of jealousy, is it is an okay thing? Yeah, so that's a good point. Talking about jealousy, jealousy is a word that can be used both ways. It's the same as as the word lust in your Bible. Lust in your Bible just means desire, but it's almost off, always used as inordinate desire. Jealousy is a word that biblically can be used in a positive way. The connotation of it and the way that we use it in our language today is almost entirely negative. Um, but that's a very good point that we have to remember God is a jealous God, meaning what? Jealousy is about desiring what someone else has. How is God a jealous God? God is jealous of, of for us. That is, he doesn't want the devil to have us. He wants to have us. And a husband who's jealous for his wife in that same way, or a wife is jealous of her husband in that same way, for, jealous for her husband, not of her husband. I think maybe that's the distinction that needs to be made. I should be jealous for my wife. That is, I want her to be mine and not someone else's, and she should be jealous for me, but I shouldn't be jealous of her. I shouldn't look at the things, the good things she has or the good things she does and say, I wish I was the one that had that. I wish I was the one that had accomplished that. That's where it becomes a problem, is just like with that idea of desire. Many desires are good, but some desires are inordinate, and we call it lust. Uh, proper jealousy is good, but if you enter the realm of being jealous of a spouse, then you enter into a problem. Uh, yeah, thank you for pointing that out. That's an excellent and biblical point. Go ahead, Tom. I'm always going to refer back to Scripture. Keep with you in Proverbs 31. The heart of the husband who safely trusts in her soul that he shall have no need for her spoil. In that one one on one relationship, as, as the Bible teaches us, man and woman, we understand that that trust is emphatically important, like we have to trust in the Lord, you know, believing, all, all those aspects. We have to trust our wives, and jealousy should, shouldn't play in the biblical. We, we tend to be jealous in some aspects as humans. But that's, that's normal, but we have to control it. There's that self-control that has to be part of it. Yeah, that's a, that's a good point, Tom. Again, like, even from the scriptures, jealousy, you have to look at it from the context of where it is. Obviously, jealousy is not inherently wrong, since God is a jealous God. Mm -hmm. But if we're going to be jealous, we must be jealous like God. We can't be jealous uh, in the sense that typically the world uses the term. Um, we got to be jealous the way God is. That is desiring what is appropriate for us to desire and to have those firm lines of this is mine and should be mine 
And there's nothing wrong with that, which, uh, which uh, our brother pointed out a minute ago. There's nothing wrong with saying, that's my wife. She's mine. A- a- as long as I'm also saying, I'm her husband, I'm hers, right? We belong to one another. Yeah. And so that's yeah. appropriate. And again, we teach that to our children. Uh, I know one thing I talk to my girls regularly about is, I always tell them, one of these days, some stinky old boy's going to come along and he's going to take you. And I said, and that's right, and that's good, because he'll be the number one man in your life at that time. And that's right. Until then, I get to have you. And, and <laughs> I'm the number one man in your life, and you're my girl. But one day, and I talked to him about the, there's a reason that a, a father walks his daughter down the aisle and says, her mother and I give her. Because one day, you're going to leave me for some stinky boy. And that's all right. And that's the way it's supposed to be. Yeah. You know, another, another, another big thing, thing too, is, like, like how, did that, how does that person, like, handle conflict? You know, like, do they, do they act rudely or do they seek, seek, their, seek, seek to his, his own? Yeah. Um, one thing is, 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 is very important with, with uh, having, having a respectful communication with, with each other. You have to, that, that, that is a, a huge red flag if that person uh, doing, doing a moment where there, there's a bill. Um, if, if, if a person is just uh, just nasty and rude doing, doing arguments, that, that, that's, that's a big red flag, especially, especially early. I think it's key for us to teach, teach our, our kids these red flags while it's still early until they get into, well, well, well being able to recognize it before, before they get in too deep with anybody. Yeah, it blows my mind when I find out about people who get married and then have their first argument. Yeah. That blows my mind. I know it, it's going to happen sometimes. That's one of the reasons that I was so hesitant to marry Nancy early on, because she agreed with everything I said. <laughs> and I thought, you know, one day she might disagree with me. I probably should find out what that's like yeah. before you, we get married. No, that, that, that's valid, man. I mean, <laughs> yeah. that's, that's valid. And that's valid. Because um, uh, I tell you, Adrian and I, woo, were some of, the, some of the arguments that we had, but we were always nice to each other. You know, always kind to him. Doing That's those, good. Doing this conversation. I, hey, whatever. I can't speak for you. <laughs> <laughs> but, but I mean, but that, that that's really important because it shows you who they are in those in those stressful times. Go ahead, brothers. I think also, we're talking about kids and, and, and wives and that kind of stuff. The way we present ourselves in front of our kids when these situations happen makes a big uh, example too as well. Uh huh. They're learning from us, right? Yep. They learn more from what they see than what they yep. do. Yep. Because if. I'll add, I'll, I'll add on to that. Hold on. The <laughs> first five years are the most impressionable of, of a child. So the parents are filling their heads. And I know she'll agree with me. Those are the times they're filling the computer, the little brain, with what, they're, what the parents are showing. So that's the most important and critical stage of the life. Yeah, that's the yeah. It's like the firmware part of their life, and then they add software later. But that's yeah, that's their firmware, right? The first five years. So yeah, and that's a good point. And so what Barry said that needs to be repeated to those who are listening. um, What Barry said is that how we conduct ourselves in front of our children is important to that. I mean, you think about that too. If you grow up in a home where they're shouting. If you grow up in a home yeah. where there's physical uh, violence between your parents, if you grow up in a home where those kind of things are occurring, that's going to affect you differently than if you grow up in a home where your parents almost never argue in front of you, or if they do have a disagreement in front of you, it's done in a calm, yeah. Christian manner. Yeah. And uh, Nancy and I used to never, we used to try to never disagree at all in front of the children. Uh, I think that's shifted over the years. Now, it's not that we mind so much disagreeing in front of them, but we will not fight in front of them. But we might disagree in front. Of, there is a teaching. Yeah. There is a teaching and your kids moment. Got to see you. Yes. Yeah. 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 Seeing you disagree. See, disagree. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Handle it in a peaceful and Christian way and move on from that. Um, rather, because you also don't want to present this world of, well, we never disagree. Like you know, they. they it, it is also a teaching moment for them to see how to disagree and how to move forward from that. Yeah. Uh, a, a father being able to say, you know what, I was wrong. You're, you're right. I'm sorry. And then move forward. Or a mother being able to say, well, I'll trust your decision on that. Or things like that are teaching moments. That's really hard for some people. Yeah. 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 
Yeah. I got two minutes, I'm gonna give you this question. I told Walter I was gonna finish. So I'm, I'm gonna read the questions off and then we can talk about it. Um, so do you rejoice in, in, in the truth? Let's think about that one. Are you willing to support and bear each other's burden? That's, that's a real good one too. Are, are, are they willing to actually go through everything with you? Um, do you? Do they demonstrate hope in a challenging situation? You spoke on that a little bit too, right? Yeah. Um, and do they practice forgiveness? Uh, that is a big one too, practicing forgiveness. Let's kind of hit on that. If anybody got anything to say? Yeah, end on that one. Yeah. Give us, what, what was your thought process as you went through that? With yeah, because every, no, no one's perfect. You know, people do things wrong um, and do they have a forgiving spirit? Because if you don't have a, a, a forgiving spirit, you're gonna end it on, 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 on some things and, and, and really have a toxic relationship. Just to, uh, yeah. it, it, it's, gonna, it's gonna stun the growth per se. Yeah, and that doesn't mean saying I'm sorry. Yeah. That means forgiving. It's forgiving. Narcissists yeah. say I'm sorry, sorry a lot yep. for bad reasons. Mm -hmm. It's about true forgiveness. Yeah, do you experience yeah. forgiveness yeah. in that relationship? Yeah, like true, true forgiveness. Yeah. All right. Well, that's our time. Thank you, everyone, for your attention this morning.